Hello guys, today I'm going to teach you how to make Twitch emotes, but not any kind of Twitch emotes, pixel art ones. And while we add it, this works not only for Twitch, but also for Discord, since the difference is just a size. Now, I know what you're going to tell me, but Sench, aren't emotes already pixel art? I mean, they're so small, they gotta be. Well, you can have a point, but not really. You see, the difference between pixel art emotes and standard ones is usually visible. You can see that it is pixel art, and the reason for that usually comes from the process. When someone creates an emote that is not pixel art, it is made at a higher size and it is displayed between 112 by 112 and 4096 by 4096 and is then uploaded to the platform, which is going to shrink it down. This is the simple upload. Some artists may do this process manually to be able to fine-tune the emote, making three exports of three smaller sizes. This is the advanced upload. The idea here is to work big to then make it small. When we do a pixel art emote, however, it's the opposite. We start small and then we upscale it to fit the display size. So on Twitch, where one emote is 28 by 28 pixels, we directly create the emote at this size and then export it in time 2 and time 4 scale to fit the different types of display. You can see the difference between the two because a non-pixel art emote will include a high amount of anti-aliasing, those pixels that are here to smooth edges and curves in a small picture. And yes, I plan to cover this topic in a future video, but that's not the point for today. A pixel art emote does not have AA or in a small amount that has been hand-placed. Here, we can see a comparison between a standard emote and a pixel art one. As you can see, those two feel very different. This difference may not be as visible with other pixel art emotes, because depending on the artist, the picture might have less contrast between the colors or have more anti-aliasing, making it look not as pixel artsy. Now, before I show you how to make pixel art emotes, we need to talk a bit about emotes in general. More precisely, what makes a good emote, because as fun as it is to create an emote, we still need to think about what it's going to be and if it's going to fulfill its role. So, what makes a good emote? Well, first of all, a good emote is readable. You can tell what the emote is with a quick glance, so it has to be simple. Since it's so small, it cannot be cluttered with many elements. Usually, a couple, maybe three elements at most, is enough for your emote. More than that, and it would be hard to make everything fit inside of the pictures, and it's just going to look confusing once displayed on Twitch. Secondly, since podcasters only have a limited set of emotes, a good one needs to be something that's going to be used often and is not similar to other emotes you already have. Finally, if you want a great emote, it needs to be unique. Having an emote that refers to an inside joke in your community is probably the best kind you can have because it will not look like any other emote on the platform and is going to be used often. Now, as we're about to jump into the process of how to make those pixel art Twitch emotes, I thought it would be the perfect time to talk about sizes. Size is going to be an important factor when designing an emote because, as you can guess, they are pretty tiny. So what size is a Twitch emote? A Twitch emote is 28 pixel by 28 pixel. If you're a masochist though, you can split those in half, going 14 by 14 or even 7 by 7 but that's usually for a very specific kind of emotes. They are then exported in 28 by 28, that's native size, 56 by 56, that's time 2, and 112 by 112, that's time 4. If, like me, you are wondering why that is, it's because each of these sizes are for a specific kind of display. 28 by 28 is for web, 56 by 56 is for retina display, which is a special kind of display with a higher pixel density, and 112 by 112 is for large display flat screens. And now that this is out of the way, we can start pixeling. To begin with, I take my idea and I do a sketch on paper to see how it will look and if it's possible. Then I open a sprite or any software of your choice and in a sprite I make a 28 by 28 canvas or a bigger canvas with 28 by 28 grid if I'm doing multiple emotes. I then black out the element with shapes of colors, which are going to be the most visible once displayed on Twitch. Smaller details are not going to be perceptible, consciously at least, because, once again, it's so small. If an element in contact with the background is bright or dark, I like to add an outline of the opposite shade. If I don't, that element will get confused with the background. 
at this point the pixel art is pretty much done and now it's a matter of editing it by changing small bits here and there to make it read better in the chat. For that I use an online website to preview my emote. It shows it in the chat box in three sizes as well as in the channel point option. You can also change the theme from dark to light to see if the emote works well on the white background. Of course the link to the website is in the video description. It's very handy because you can just take your file and drag and drop it into the website and it will instantaneously give you a preview in the chat. Then I take my time to look at the preview and try to see what I can improve on. Then I go back into A-Sprite, fix what didn't work and I put it back into the emote preview, repeating this process until the emote looks good. Remember, it's more important for the emote to be clearly readable at display size than to look good or to be accurate with the description of what's portrayed. It's all about sacrificing accuracy and aesthetic for readability. It can be a bit hard to make a good pixel art emote. If you are new at pixel art, it's gonna be even harder for you, but I also think it's a great exercise for beginners because the constraints are so harsh. So if you're having some troubles, don't worry, it's normal and you'll get there at some point. I wanted to close this video on a few examples of bad pixel art emotes to give you an idea of what to avoid. Now, these are more bad emotes than bad pixel arts, but I think it's still important to see where they fail so we can learn from it. Okay, so I'm recording this with another microphone, so I hope it sounds okay. The first mistake I want to cover and that you absolutely want to avoid is a lack of contrast in your emotes. So what I mean by that is if you have multiple elements of similar color, if they're not separated well enough, it's gonna make the emote hard to read. So, here on this example that I've made, using an emote of mine that I slightly modified, you can see what I'm talking about, because the hand is blue, the color is blue, and the helmet is blue. And so it makes the emote hard to read, because you can't really make the difference between the color on the hand. Instead, you read it as there is this one shape that's doing that kind of thing, and then you don't really understand what it is. Same thing with the skin and the hair. The hair is blonde and the skin is light skin, so you don't really m clearly make the difference. You can see at this display size where the hair ends and where the skin begins, but once displayed in the chat, it's so small that it's kind of going to blend together as one thing. Even if you screen to eye, you can see the difference, you want to make this as clear as possible, right? Because one, it's going to be easier to read, but it's also going to make the emote more appealing. So the way to fix this is if I go to the next frame, see I got rid of the color here and so now you clearly see that this is a hand or at least you can tell, you can kind of guess that this is a hand and uh, it doesn't get confused with the color anymore and for the hair and the skin I just added this cast shadow here that's going to separate it. And now once displayed in the chat you can clearly see the difference between the hair, skin, the hand and the, the coat. Okay, the second mistake I want to talk about is not taking into consideration the light theme. So I know most people use dark theme, but there's still people out there using the light theme. If you don't take those people into consideration, the emote is not going to be able to be read on this white background. So, here we can see this character is waving. Frog here, that's my logo. Um, the character is waving and he's wearing a white shirt. But, since there's no outline, if you put it on a white background, it's just going to blend in, right? And yes, you can guess like there's something going on around here, because obviously the arm is not coming out of nowhere, but it's still better if people can see the shirt, right? It's going to be more appealing, and it's also going to be easier to read. So, the way to fix this is to add an outline. And same for the, the green as well. I mean, the green is probably going to be easier to read, but since it's a very light green, I kind of prefer to add an outline on it as well. And no, it's going to work both on light theme and on dark theme. Because on dark theme, well, you're not going to be able to see the outline, but it's okay because you can still read the emote. And on the light theme, however, you're going to be able to see the shirt because the outline is there now and it's still mating it from the background. The third mistake I want to talk about is having too many elements. And I talked about that in the beginning of the video as well as the outline if I remember correctly. But basically here you can see this emote, well first of all it's very ugly, don't care too much about that because it's just a quick example I've made, but also there's too many elements, right? You have this guy with the cool sunglasses shooting a shotgun, there's a star in the top right corner, there's a GG on the middle bottom, and he's wearing cat ears for some reason. 
it's way too confusing. The emote is trying to be way too many things at the same time. And uh, well, yeah, it's if you want to use it as an over-the-top emote, well, yeah, I guess it kind of worked this way. But usually you don't want to go for that, right? You want an emote that's like clearly, okay, this is a this is a love emote, this is heart emote, this is a sleep emote, this is a high emote, lurk emote, money emote, I don't know. And you only have a few elements, right? Because if you display this in the chat, you can't really tell here because a sprite is not really like doesn't get to the exact same size. It kind of gets blurry when you emote. It's it's kind of hard to tell what the emote is. So the way to do that is to first of all you you gotta throw stuff out. So you gotta get rid of some of those elements. So here I got rid of the GG. I got rid of the ta the stars. I got rid of the cat ears. Uh, I kept the shotgun and the sunglasses, and I changed the shirt because. Um, the shot was blue, so it would have been confused with the gray from the shotgun. So I made it a light green and I added an outline since it's a light color. And no, it's way easier to read and it works way much... It works better as an emote. That's what I'm trying to say. That's it for this video guys. Don't hesitate to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I got more like this one coming. And give me your feedbacks in the comments. This is my first time doing this kind of content, so any kind of criticism will help me get better. Okay, I really gotta go now because as you can hear, I'm losing my voice, I'm very tired of recording this. Uh, I'll see you in the next one, and until then, keep pixeling.